12 using stitches to close cuts. It's not wrong to use stitches. In most cases, it's the only way to close a wound. But putting stitches is a long and painful procedure which requires removing the stitches after the wound heals. So, in some cases, a less brutal thing might work. Skin glue. Skin glue is very quick and virtually painless. Wash the wound with cold water before using glue. Then stop the bleeding by pressing the wound. Close the edges of the wound and put skin glue along it. However, if you see that the wound is too big, don't take the risk and go to the hospital for professional help. Number 11. Lifting up an unconscious person. If someone faints, you have to lift them up and sprinkle some cold water on them, right? Well, that's what most people think. Like this video if you thought so. However, lifting a fainted person up will only aggravate the spasm. What you should do is lift their legs up, unbutton any tight pieces of clothing, and don't let them stand up right after they come around. After they regain consciousness, don't let them drink coffee or energy drinks that many people love. Caffeine will only lead to dehydration. Number 10. Dealing with a foreign object in the eye. First things first, if there's something in your eye like a piece of glass, don't do anything yourself. Have someone drive you to the hospital. If the object is just an eyelash, then don't forget to wash your hands before you do anything. Try to locate the eyelash by looking in a mirror. Blink to make your tears wash the eyelash out. Once the object is in the corner of your eye, take a wet piece of cloth and use it to remove the eyelash. Number 9. Pulling out objects from wounds. Now, you can pull a splinter from a finger or a small glass shard from your hand, but you must never try to pull out objects from serious wounds. Even doctors keep them in place until the patient is in surgery. The thing is, while the object is inside the wound, it doesn't let the bleeding start. So, until you are under professional supervision, don't do anything, not even touch the object. The only thing you can do is put some alcohol on the wound, but you must be ready for the wound to hurt very much. Ah! Whoa, that's a splinter. No matter how scary a knife in a leg looks like, don't try to be a hero and just go to the hospital. Number 8. Rubbing a person with a fever with alcohol or vinegar. Vinegar and alcohol are absorbed into the blood, so it's kind of a way to get drunk or to make a wacky salad dressing. Seriously speaking, alcohol rubbing may create intoxication, while vinegar will significantly raise acidity, which is especially dangerous for children. So don't believe these outdated pieces of advice. Drink a lot of water, tea, and other non-alcoholic fluids. Cool the air in the room to a temperature of 61 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, or from 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. In these conditions, the patient will get over the fever by themselves. If they don't, they should see a doctor. Number 7. Applying ointments to a wound. Ointments contain unwanted moisture, which is a great environment for bacteria to reproduce more quickly. The best thing you can do is clean the wound in cool water with soap and put a dry bandage on it. You will see that the wound will heal more quickly. Number 6. Applying ice to a bruise. There's nothing actually wrong with treating a bruise with ice, but most people do it wrong. You shouldn't apply ice directly to the skin if you don't want to get a cold burn. Instead, put a cloth between your skin and a pack of ice. However, even using a cloth doesn't mean there is no risk of being burnt. That's why you should put ice for a maximum of 20 minutes at a time and then take a 90-minute break. If for some reason you don't have a cloth you can use, don't use ice at all. Believe us, you'd prefer to have a bruise rather than a cold burn. Another thing you should know is that there is no point in using ice 48 hours after the injury. Number 5. Applying warmth to a sprain. When your muscles are sprained, a warm cloth won't help. On the contrary, heat will strengthen the blood flow, leading to a more severe swelling. In the first days after the injury, apply cold. 
it will lessen the inflammation and kill the pain. Try to use the sprained limb as little as possible for at least the first 48 hours. Number 4. Rescuing a drowning person There's only one obstacle on your way to rescue a drowning person – not being able to swim. If you are, though, nothing can stop you from saving that person's life. Remember to approach them from behind so they don't see you coming, otherwise the person may hinder you or drag you down in their panic. After you've approached the person, grab them under the armpits or by the chin and move to the shore, keeping their head at your belly. Number 3. Setting a bone on your own Are you a professional trauma surgeon? If not, you should never set a dislocated joint on your own, no matter how cool or brutal that looks in the movies. It may result in additional injuries and the resulting litigation. The best course of action would be to immobilize the injured limb and go to the hospital as soon as possible. Bandage the limb in a comfortable position, immobilizing not only the place of possible fracture, but also the two closest joints as well. Number 2. Making yourself vomit in case of poisoning The standard recommendation for poisoning is to make yourself vomit. It might sound reasonable, but actually it's strictly prohibited. First of all, the poison can get into the lungs and damage them. The second problem is that if someone was poisoned with some chemicals, vomiting doubles the chance of burning your throat. Finally, it might be very difficult to stop vomiting once it starts. So this can lead to dehydration and even more severe consequences. In this situation, the only smart thing you can do is call the ambulance as fast as possible. And number 1 treating burns with butter or sour cream. Many people believe that this method is effective only because it relieves pain. But why do butter and sour cream make you feel better? The thing is, we keep them in the fridge, so when we put them on a burn, they're cold. The danger is, though, that butter and sour cream dry your skin and disrupt thermal exchange. This results in heat having nowhere to go but deeper into the skin, causing even more damage. What you should do is hold your hand in the cool water for 15 minutes. This will help with the pain. Do you know why blisters appear on the burnt spot? In our bodies, everything happens for a reason. Blisters protect the wound from infection. Removing the protective layer may lead to festering. 